So we've used differential calculus twice. We've done it for two different groups of universities. One group very committed to advanced research, the other group less so. And we've got two quite interesting conclusions. The first is that minimum average cost occurs at a substantially lower level of student numbers for institutions less committed to research. The other conclusion is this. Most American universities have a smaller number of full-time students than that which the research has revealed would minimize minimum efficient scale. So most American universities could expand and by doing so reach minimum efficient scale, reduce their average costs of production. If, if the research is correct, um, it suggests that the great majority of American universities have not reached minimum efficient scale. That, that, that's, uh, that is one inference that you could take from that research, but it's also the case that they're measuring their output as just number of students worked through the system. And I don't know that they do any follow-up to find out whether they retain the material better. I'm not sure they're holding quality constant. You can mass produce a cheaper car and it's still a cheaper car. And you know, the cars are observable and people can say, well, this car is not a BMW. Uh, but you can't see these graduates and say, this, you know, this graduate is not as good as graduates would have been in smaller classes. And so I think the measurement difficulties make drawing firm conclusions pretty difficult at this time. Calculus has enabled us to draw important conclusions about efficiency in American higher education. However, as always, the results are only as good as the assumptions.